Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is KK and today we are going to talk about my 21 day digital detox, 21 day fast from all things social media. This detox or fast included Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. In addition to the social media side, it included taking a break from any TV series and movies whether streaming or on cable or whatever. Um, the only time I made an exception was I absolutely had to go and see Mission Impossible. Yeah, so that was the only break I took as far as um, movies were concerned. And then of course, I still streamed church services on Sunday, but I'm gonna put an asterisk next to that because that was also included in my fast as far as not binging church sermons, which is what I used to do. So <clears throat> I guess to give a little bit of a background, um, as a kid, I watched a lot of TV, tons and tons of TV. Um, and it consumed a lot of my time, especially during the summer breaks. Um, we were not those girls, I have sisters, who had like extracurricular activities during the summer. Um, most of the things that we did were during the school year. So um, I went to performing arts high school and our year was pretty busy with performances year round, not just in the course, but also in small groups that our choir director created within the, um, amongst the students. So I was a part of two other groups that had to do performances. And during the holidays, we were extremely busy because we were performing all over the county. Um, so when the breaks would come for summer or spring break, we were usually inside. We weren't outside, we were inside. Um, we go to the beach and do little things like that, but we didn't have, uh, we weren't in sports. I tried track, that's a story for another day. It didn't last but a couple months. But beyond that, um, TV was pretty much what I did during the summertime um, and on during the break. So I watched some of everything. I watch VH1, MTV, and you're talking about the late 90s to 2000s when TV I feel like was like at its peak we had like a wide variety of TV shows. So I declare the 90s to the early 2000s, the golden era of television because of the wide variety of television and you did not have the ability to just watch shows when you wanted to. If you wanted to watch something, you had to tune in at that particular time. You would use your TV guide to see what was coming on TV and you know, you had to be ready to watch your show. You, and there wasn't no fast forward, we rewinded, none of that. Um, you had your early, beginnings of reality shows with survivor real world road rules then you had your trashy talk shows with ricky lake jerry springer richard bay uh, phil donahue sally jesse Raphael. um then you also had mtv where they would have like their special shows or special programming during the summer and spring break and then you also like you know cisco shakedown and you also had like say what karaoke and if, trl who can forget trl that was like my whole like my whole high school years and summer middle school, I would rush home to see TRL so I could watch my Backstreet Boys videos. And then of course you had 106 and Park on BT, VH1 I used to watch pop-up video. That's how I even know about certain music, um, like Hall of Notes or Metallica or something. Cause I watch pop-up video and then also on MTV, you got exposed to all different kinds of music. So I feel like that was the greatest era of television because you were forced to watch a variety of shows. You couldn't just pick what you wanted. You had to, you know, wait till that program ended so you could watch the beginning of the next show. And you might end up liking that show because you were waiting for the next show to begin. Um, so <clears throat> I could go on and on about TV um, because like I said, I spent so much time watching television as a kid. Um, I have so much use useless information in my head when it comes to TV series and celebrities and actors and actresses and all that good stuff. But just want to give you a background as far as how much TV I was consuming as a kid. And as I got older, it began to taper off. Um, but that, it took a long time, long time y'all. And yeah, so that's enough of that. Fast forward to adulthood. Um, of course the college TV was not I went around no TV show. I was outside back then, outside doing whatever, some of everything, party hardying, studying. You know, I had a, a very active social life. Um, and I think like most people during the COVID and the pandemic, um, their outlet was social media. And that's when I actually joined Instagram. I was, had been on Facebook forever. 
have been on Facebook since 2005. Um, so I joined when I was in college and I kept the account active. <clears throat> but Instagram, I was a late, uh, uh, late adopter, very late. Um, and then I never, I had a Twitter, but I never used it again, late adopter. I think I might've opened the Twitter account the same time I opened the Instagram. And all of this was because I said, okay, I'm going to get on YouTube and start recording. So I opened up a YouTube account to record the Instagram and Twitter all during the Rona during 2020. And I was also pregnant too. So, and I wanted to find some kind of outlet, just something to do, you know? Um, besides just being in the house all the time and reading and, and binge watching TV shows. I think during that time I might've been binge watching Downton Abbey. Yes, I love, I can't say I love period movies, but I kind of do. Anyway, or period TV shows and movies. So anyway, I guess the other foundational piece to all of that is I did grow up in a um, Christian household. Um, I went to church until I was regularly until fourth or fifth grade. And then again, that's another story for another day why I stopped going. But um, I went off and on all through high school and all through college. I got baptized while I was in college, which again, that again, that's a story for a whole nother day because I was definitely, there was a tug of war um, between good and evil while I was in college. So God has always been in my life, but not at the forefront like he should be. So for the longest time, I've wanted to deactivate my Facebook. I might even include like some screenshots of me saying in my status, like I just want to deactivate this mess. Cause I already saw back then, like in the late 2000s, 2010, 2008, what it was becoming. Um, it was fun. It was cute. It was playful in the beginning. People just, you know, posted pictures. And then within like a four or five year period, it just started to turn into something else where it was all about me, 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 me. And when I joined Instagram, that's when I started to notice how it was affecting me um, as far as the me, 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 me stuff. Um, the comparison trap, the glorification of self is what I, is the main reason where I said, okay, you know what, I need to take a break. So I guess I'm kind of jumping ahead to why I decided to um, take a 21 day fast from social media. And, oh, and including that fast was no gossip, okay? So <clears throat> that meant gossip from like amongst my friends or reading like gossip stories, whatever. Um, and just to give more background, I had already stopped watching the news. I haven't watched the news before the fast, probably in three months or so, because I realized like what the mainstream networks deemed as newsworthy was not really newsworthy. newsworthy. It was just sensational. What's sensational? What's going to get attention? Um, so with mainstream media, you got somebody, the powers that be, whoever deciding this is what we think you should pay attention to. And on social media, you got people saying, pay attention to me. And so everybody's paying attention to foolishness. Um, it was just a small sliver of people out there that were sharing like, um, uplifting, noteworthy, inspirational messages like your Jerry Flowers or your Tony Gaskins or, um, to add to that list, um, there are tons of YouTube channels and news websites that I still engaged in, um, but not during the fast. So some of the other websites I like to use to get my political information or actual like legit news, things that we need to be concerned about and be politically active and engaged with. Um, <clears throat> I was still looking at like Newsweek or The Atlantic or um, USA Today. Those were the websites I decided, okay, I'm going to use these and whatever other resources I could find. Um, and as far as YouTube channels, there were still um, political channels that I follow and um, other inspirational channels. And I... It's, it's a touchy subject because people get all up in arms when it comes to news and news consumption um, and what's newsworthy and what's not. Um, my issue was that the things that folks should be paying attention to was not really being broadcast. So you almost have to like go and dig for it. Um, and it shouldn't be that hard to find news that really affects your day-to-day -day life. Um, <clears throat> so 
but during the fast, I did not consume any news, um, whether it was on YouTube or um, news journal websites. Um, so I don't want y'all to think I just threw the baby out with the bathwater and just like, oh, I don't, don't consume news. I just don't consume my news via mainstream media or through cable news networks um, because, like I said, it just seems to be mostly sensationalism and infotainment, not um, not real news. Um, so there might be nuggets of news in there, but it's usually just people's you know, opinions and talking points. And that's not what it's supposed to be. You're not supposed to share your opinion when you're talking about news, unless it's an op-ed, you know, but most of the shows, it seems like they're just op-eds. They're just opinion pieces for two hours straight. So, um, that's all. Can't think of anybody else right now. Or just if you're looking for like information, you had, you know, on the flip side of that, like Jordan Peterson and <clears throat> who I guess would be identified with like the incel group. But I thought it was strange how he got attached to that group of people, but whatever. So you have these voices that are out there, but then at the same time, you have this huge glorification of self where people are so enamored with putting themselves on display for a little of nothing or for a whole lot. I guess they think, you know, for money or for just attention, for likes, whatever. And I saw myself falling into that trap, even though I wasn't posting like provocative pictures or anything, but it was provocative to me because I know where I'm trying to go in my spiritual journey in my life. So I said, okay, I'm going to take a break. Um, and I could give more reasons why I decided, but at the beginning, that's all I knew. That was the main reason. It was just like, okay, it's too much glorification of self. It's too many people enamored with themselves and I don't want to fall into that trap too. Um, I was getting too much pleasure out of seeing the likes and seeing the follows. And it's funny cause I never felt like that with Facebook, but for some reason with Instagram, it was just hitting different. Okay. Um, so the catalyst, the catalyst to the fast, <sighs> again, this is something that had been throwing back and forth with just getting on Facebook before we even had Instagram since 2010. Um, but then the voice got louder within the last few months of just going ahead and taking the fast, the more I got into reading my Bible every day, praying every day, sometimes reading the Bible two times a day, reading three verses at a time, um, three verses, three chapters at a time, sorry, three chapters at a time. And um, the more I started journaling on a regular basis. So my, I became more disciplined and I was feeling like the Instagram was not a part of my discipline to make me a stronger person, to make me a more faithful person. Um, so I'm sure some of y'all like, this is not where I thought this video was going. Well, sorry. Um, and I just did not. Okay. So I just didn't feel like it was useful to me anymore. It wasn't giving me what I needed on a spiritual level. And why would anybody think that it would, you know, but it was feeding something else. It was feeding the, the insecure part of me, the need for validation part of me, the lonely part of me. And I think a lot of people are in the same boat, but they're just afraid to say it out loud. I'm just saying it, um, being transparent. And hopefully this will help somebody realize like, you don't need that. You don't need social media. Um, you don't need other people, period. Even if you're not on social media, you don't need other people to validate you. But that it takes a lot of work to get to that point. It takes therapy, it takes Jesus, it takes, um, being your own cheerleader, journaling, it's a lot of work to get to that place. I'm still trying to get to that place. The typical reasons people don't want to, you know, deactivate or um, delete their social media or take a break or take a fast or whatever from social media is like, oh, I found myself comparing myself to other people or I was just, I just wanted likes and all that stuff. But on a deeper level for me, it was the glorification of self. So that was at the initial reason why I said, okay, I'll take 21 day fast. That the final like, Nail in a coffin was the Kiki Palmer foolishness. I just couldn't believe the amount of attention people were paying to this mess. I understand it's a conversational piece. It opens up the conversation to like, uh, what's appropriate or inappropriate in a relationship, what's appropriate and what's inappropriate to post online. And that's fine and good, but I just feel like 
it's just another way that we all get distracted from what's really important. Um, we are worried about other people's relationships instead of worrying about our relationship with ourselves, our relationship with God, our relationship with our family members. Um, when was the last time you put that much energy into anything? Think about it. Probably been a hot minute, right? So, um, <clears throat> I think a lot of the news stories that are out there, a lot of things that get posted, is just a distraction from our everyday mundane lives. And it shouldn't be like that. Your life should be so awesome and amazing that seeing something like that, it should just make you laugh. You might, you know, have a, you know, a couple key keys about it and keep moving. But people were doing whole think pieces on this mess. Um, and there's other stories going on. And I'm fine with people indulging in entertaining stories. That's well and good, but there needs to be some kind of balance on the other side. like. What are you doing to like entertain yourself outside of social media? Do you have any hobbies? Do you have any interests? Are you reading anything? Are you journaling? Are you doing anything to build yourself up? Um, and I just don't see that. Uh, yeah, so that was what was the final catalyst. That and also the creation or the launch of Threads. And I was just like, oh, another thing for all of us to get sucked into. Okay, yeah, that's real good. Yeah, perfect. Another way that we could become a user or become addicted to something that's not helpful. Um, so I took the 21 day fast. Um, did I log in a couple times? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Um, did I stay on longer in a minute? Nope. Cause I immediately started to feel like yucky as soon as I got on there. And what was interesting, the second thing I learned during this fast, I said, well, I didn't even really put it as a thing I learned, but the first thing I learned was that I realized like a lot, a lot of it is just attention seeking on social media, especially for me. Second thing I learned is it's so many voices out here, y'all. So much information, misinformation. Um, you have people that have platforms that are mentally unwell and people are listening to them. Children, young adults, teenagers are listening to these people and they're not well. Okay. It's people talking about stuff they ain't even lived. There's folks out here scamming folks. And we believe in all this. So <clears throat> that was the second thing I learned. It's a lot of voices out here. And it's people out here who are also going through the Christian walk. And they want to learn how to hear God's voice. You got to turn the volume down on all this other stuff. That's what I learned. I can't listen to him if I got all these other things I'm listening to. And even like, I, okay, so I'm gonna tie this into what I said at the beginning, but I asked you about a binge in the sermons. Binge in the sermons was good for a season, right? I needed to learn a new language of how to talk to myself. And being able to get in the word through reading the Bible and listening to church sermons was great. It helped me get through, helped me get through a really difficult time, right? But at some point, you have to be able to have a direct relationship with God and with Jesus, not just having a third party involved. So again, you got to recognize what season you are in in your life. So I realized like, okay, I don't need that, that much information coming from so many different sources because I was struggling to figure out my own voice and God's voice, if that makes any sense. If it don't, I'm sorry. I'm just speaking off the cuff. I got some kind of little bit of notes down here, but I'm really just speaking, you know, as I go. Um, so this is the second thing I learned. Um, did I go through withdrawals? Yeah, I did. And y'all probably laughing. You can't go through withdrawals from not using social media. Try it. You try just staying off of that for a day. How many of y'all can not log in for a day onto YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, or Threads, or Twitter, or Snapchat, or whatever it is that is your thing? Some of y'all gonna y'all gonna be struggling. Okay. So the first three days is when I had withdrawal symptoms of being irritable um, and cranky. And I was right after the three days, I physically got sick. Y'all think I'm playing. I was sick for the whole time I was doing the fast. Ask my friends, ask my mother. I was dis disgustingly sick. Um, so I, I think, I don't know if that was like a spiritual thing, a spiritual attack. I have no idea. I just know that. I haven't been sick in a hot, long, a long time. And this is the first time I was just really sick for a whole, basically a whole, almost a whole month I was sick. Um, I ended up having to get an antibiotic.
to finally start feeling better and feel like a human being again. I gained weight because I was comfort eating. So it's just a bad combination of stuff going on. So I was trying to compensate. Um, yes, I was reading, I was journaling, I was still going to therapy. Um, I was, I, but I stopped going to the gym and I was comfort eating because um, I was sick. I didn't want to go to the gym and get everybody else sick too. Um, couldn't even go walking because it's been 100 degrees in Texas almost every day. Literally every day. It's been 100 degrees since every day since maybe end of May. So the walking, I tried to go a couple times, but it was just unbearable. So the last thing I learned during the fast, well, I can't even say I learned this during the fast. Um, I It's kind of tied to number one. If I decide to get back on social media, it's going to be for business purposes only. And it's going to be a situation where I'm not at the forefront. God is in whichever, in any way that I'm talking about myself, it's got to be tied to God's glory or tied to edifying and uplifting people. Not just look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. I'm posing. I'm cute. And da, 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 da. We want you to be cute. We want you to be fly. You know, I want to be cute and fly and all that good stuff, but it's a line. And that's the part I have to figure out what's the line for me as far as, okay, I'm looking cute and fly, but I also want all this tension. That's that's when it becomes a problem, at least for me. Everybody has their limits on, you know, what does and doesn't work for them. So um, I'm gonna make another video uh, because I have more to share and I didn't want this to be too long and I know I kind of rambled, but to tie it all in a nice little bow, um, I took a 21 day fast from social media and gossip and I feel like it was successful. Uh, I feel like at the end of it, after being sick, after going through the three days of withdrawal, after um, realizing that I don't, you know, it wasn't doing anything for me, I learned that I have a lot more time than I thought I had. I slept better. Um, I read more. I finished three books. <laughs> books that I had already started, so it wasn't like I started them brand new. But I never read one book at a time. I always read like two or three. Um, so I finished three books that had already started. Um, I started getting back into like the artistic things that I enjoy and I started to have a deeper relationship with God because I knew his voice finally like I know when he is talking to me before or I would always wonder like how do people know that there's God and not the devil or whatever I can now I can I can discern I'm starting to have discernment okay so um I'm grateful that social media exposed me to some great leaders and what's so funny is like I mentioned Jerry Flowers earlier one of my friends sent me his video again at the very beginning of the pandemic and I didn't even know that he was based in Houston and I had been out here for like a year by that point had been watching his videos and stuff and then once I realized he was out here I went to the church to visit a couple times and all that great stuff so social media is not all bad okay I think it's just like anything where you have to use it responsibly like liquor okay it's the same it's the same thing you need to use it responsibly and you need to know what you're using it for and what and what the purpose is for you so that's the part i have to figure out or i figured out some of it but i need to get more detail but like i said i'm gonna make another part two to this because there's more to the story so hopefully this was helpful to somebody to let them know that you ain't crazy that there's nothing wrong with you if you feel like social media does something to you or gossip it does something to you, um, or celebrity foolishness, it doesn't sit well with you. So um, I'll make a part two, because I'm sure there are questions and I might answer them in the next video. So thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe. Peace out.